prioritization. And let me tell you a little about the chart. There are two measurements of prioritization. One is your goal, and the second is time. So if across the top, a goal is either important or it's not important, and along your vertical axis, it's either urgent or it's not urgent. So if I look in the upper left-hand quadrant, you'll see that something that is important and urgent is number one. You'll then see what's important and not urgent is number two. What's not important yet urgent, number three. And what's not important and not urgent, number four. What do you think people do the most? Four. four. <laughs> Why? It's easier. It's, easier. it's easier. How many of you are list makers? What's the best thing about the list making? I want to get rid of it. I want to cross it off. I want to get done. Let's get done with it. Me too. And how many times have you ever been to a meeting or something like that? Let's cover some of the things that are important. Um, uh, let's just get them off our list. And then all of a sudden, there's five minutes left in the meeting, and what haven't you done? You haven't done this far. This chart becomes an interesting thing. I have some clients who I have doing this chart every single day. Every day. Wake up in the morning religiously and say, okay, here's the most important, most urgent things I've got to get done, and here are all the other things I've got to get done. Now you might say, well, you know, why would you do it every day? Well, you know, today is April, what, 12th? 12th. Well, probably up in important urgent right now, let's say, taxes is probably up there, is moving up into that realm. But on January 1st, if we had done this, taxes were important, but probably not as urgent, so they were probably in this quadrant during that period of time. And then you might say, well, what's not important but yet urgent? Well, you know, um, my favorite blue suit is in the cleaners, and I really would like to wear it, but the cleaner closes at 5. So it's urgent that I get to the cleaners by 5, but it's not necessarily the most important thing I have to do. So if I basically separate this by important and urgent, then I do it. If not, what happens is you get stuck in this world of not important and not urgent and just say, well, I got the loaf of bread. That was good. <laughs> and, and you're not, you know, then all of a sudden the day's over. How's your day go? Well, I didn't get a lot done. Well, why didn't you get a lot? Well, you didn't get done. You didn't get the most important th and, and urgent things done. That's what you didn't get done. So in terms of prioritization, this is about prioritization. And this is, a, um, this is something that if you run meetings, I strongly suggest do your agenda on these things. Put an agenda together on this. Don't just put an agenda together in some kind of linear order, but put it together in this. And then when you sit down in your meeting, go through what's most important and most urgent first. Instead of doing, well, let's just cover the, some of the small stuff first. No. Get done what you have to get done. Get done the important things. Mm -hmm. I did some work with a commercial realtor. And um, he, he kept telling me he was on the phone all day long. I said, well, what does that mean? Uh, all day long I'm on the phone. Well, what, what, he, what was really happening is he was on the phone for five minutes, hung up the phone, stood up, walked around, went to the bathroom, got water, went and visited his neighbors, did a hundred other things. And the most important thing is he left his focus. He never went back to what was important and urgent that he was working on. And instead, he went to get something done like this. And by the end of the day, he felt like he hadn't really accomplished anything. And he was on the phone all day. So it becomes a mental understanding and, a, and an attitude more than anything else. <laughs>